pull in the birth date. And we can go ahead and turn on auto search now so that when we update any criteria, it's just going to refresh the search for us. Um, and if in the traditional search, it would, it would do these, uh, it would automatically bring in other data, but in a, in a very limited fashion. So um, there's pros and cons to that, but this search builder is really intended to be for admins, power database users. So uh, you, would, uh, you would need to know a little bit about the schema to know that email is not a field on the contact record itself. It's not gonna be here. Um, you would need to add it here. So emails would be something that you can bring in. And you can also say, I wanna pull in emails if it's the primary. And now the email field, all of them are available to add here and we can get contacts with their primary email. Now, uh, it actually can do more powerful stuff than that, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but uh, this, is, this is what you would call like a one-to-one -one join where um, every contact can only have but one primary email. Um, so it's not going to require any grouping or generate duplicate uh, rows in, in here, but let's try adding something else. So let's try also adding contributions. So let's all, I'll pull in contributions. And um, you'll notice, by the way, that um, when I said with emails, I said optional. I could also make that required and that would pull in. Now you can see I only have records that have an email address, um, but I'm gonna keep it optional in this uh, example. And we get contacts that both do and don't have email addresses. Okay, so let's pull in contribution records. And now the thing about uh, contributions and contacts is that a contact could have multiple contributions and so as we pull in these contributions, we're also going to want to decide how to group these records. Um, and the simplest way to do that is just to group on contact ID. Um, and I think we're going to need to pick a, do one more thing here before we can um, make this work. Okay. So, Let's look at our contributions. So we've got with uh, contributions, we could do some criteria. We could say with only contributions of this particular financial type, um, but let's just add some contribution fields. So this is the date received and the um, total amount. Now, it's gonna prompt us to do some uh, aggregating with these group fields. Uh, and I'm working on making these error messages a little bit better, but the idea is that if you have a, um, if you're grouping your records and you can potentially have more than one field, it needs to know what to do with those multiple records. And so you need to aggregate them somehow. So for example, we can say, uh, let's, let's pull in the maximum received date and uh, the average total amount, and then we're gonna get some results. So we can see that, um, and just to make this more useful, let's pull in one more record. Um, let's list all the financial types that this could be, and also, um, get a count of contributions, okay. So now we've got some more useful data to work with. Uh, we've got, we're able to see the contact um, with a list of all their email addresses, uh, the most recent contribution, the average amount that they've donated, um, the different financial types of their contributions and how many contributions they've made. Um, and we've done this in a 
relatively easy way. I'm still working on making some things a little more intuitive, like um, letting you know when you haven't done grouping and that's why you're not getting any results. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's got some power to it. As you can see, this has got some potential. Uh, and so I'm excited that this search builder screen can be the place where admins and uh, power database users can build something that then uh, in another phase of this project, we can have them create simpler search screens based on this that more day-to-day uh, -day users can use or uh, reports or dashlets. Um, for now, what you can do with these results is you can create a smart group. Um, so we have done another side project to this, creating API4 based smart groups because all of this is built off of API v4. Um, it doesn't do anything that's not just regular API query. In fact, you can see in the URL here, uh, actually, I'm not sure if that's shown in the screen, but you can see in, uh, if you do this yourself, you can see in the URL bar that all of these uh, API params are actually in there as well. So you can bookmark this search and just come right back to it. Uh, everything you've done here can be bookmarked and linked. So we can create a smart group out of these results and give it a name. Um, save it. Uh, we haven't really done a lot of financial criteria here, but we could um, to make the smart group actually mean something. Right now, it's just basically pulling all records. Um, so let me show you a few more things that you can do with this so far in uh, this iteration of the project. We can select some contact IDs um, on this page and other pages. And it'll say right here, we've got five selected records. And with those records, we can do a number of actions. So this is not the complete list of actions from advanced search, but we're getting there. We've added a bunch. Uh, so you can add, delete, export. Uh, so for example, uh, if we choose export, this will say we've got the five records selected and prompt us to either select primary fields or take us through the regular export wizard from here. Um, we can do mass updates, and this actually works for any, any entity in the, um, in the search because we basically are just pulling in API, rec API uh, fields and updating them. So we could say um, the first name for all these people is something new. Update it, and now we've got uh, new first names for all the five records that we just had. Um, that's powerful. Use it carefully. Uh, a lot of these other items you'll recognize from advanced search. Um, let's see. I don't think I've done this, but you can um, at any point take these fields, move them around, click on them to sort. Uh, so start with the person with the most contributions first uh, would be the way that we're sorting this. Um, add fields, take them out. Um, put a field somewhere else in these results. Uh, we can also get uh, you know, a lot more complex in our where query. And there's also one more piece that I haven't shown you for people who actually use SQL. This is the having clause. Um, so now that we've got our results, we can filter these results even after doing the aggregate work. So we could say we just want um, we just want to show records where the number of contributions is greater than one or two. And it's going to just show us the one record that has three contributions greater than one. And it's going to show us the records that have two contributions. So that lets us do the having clause. Again, um, the having clause will let us do and or and not groups. You can get some really complicated nests down here um, with uh, saying, you know, we want uh, the, we want the, uh, I don't know how Pretty sure you can drag this in here. Yeah, there you go. Um, you want the number of contributions to be greater than one, um, or you want the um, you know total amount to be 
uh, greater than 50, for example, and it's going to do that for us um, and do a do an or clause in the having. And for those that are really into uh, being database nerdy, um, you can click on this and see the actual SQL that's been generated by all of this um, as the API uh, took its params and turned it into SQL. Um, one of these queries was for uh, getting our pages of results, and the second query was for getting the total number of rows to populate the pager. What else can I show you from this? Um, I, I would recommend that people play around with it. Um, you can do a lot. Like I said, this is just a search for contacts, but you could do a search for many other things, um, pull in uh, joins of different entities. I'm working this week to try and get those joins to work even better um, because not everything um, is joinable yet, uh, but I want it to be. Um, Tim and I have been working on a side project to get relationships uh, joins to work a lot better in, in core and in the API so that it's easier to pull into this search screen. All right, feel free to type your questions into the chat. Um, happy to happy to field those. I know that there's been a lot of discussion. Um, can we modify the actions via hooks? Yes, you can. Uh, and I will work on documenting that. But yes, your extension can uh, can add actions to the list or change the way the actions work. So in phase two of this project, we're planning to add to this drop down here where it's not just being able to create smart groups, but also being able to create other search screens. Um, and that's the tie in to uh, form builder where we can build other search forms um, for users to use based on um, based on this and also to have some uh, some reporting and dashlet features uh, built into this as well so that it can really this can really start to match feature parity with some of the older and um, you know harder to maintain stuff but very well uh, developed uh, older features from Civi CRM. Um, Andrew, for the minimum version question, this is going to need to be running on the bleeding edge. Um, this, we just put this in. You can see this is on Civi 5.29 alpha. I think you can actually download and run the extension on 5.28. That should work. Um, yeah, so there's a question, uh, can you search, for example, contacts who are assigned to meeting activities? Uh, I can't do that example right this second because that's actually a uh, work in progress. I said I, I was working this week to make joins work better and activities are one of those joins where you have to go through another table to get to it. So yes, you can. Uh, I might actually be able to concoct something like that right now, but it wouldn't be as pretty as what I would like. Um, but yes, that's the idea. You will be able to do that. Another question, can you search to return for each contact the latest meeting activity and the latest phone call activity, i.e. two sets of joins? Yes. So you can join onto the same thing more than once. Um, the API allows for that. Um, and then you would be able to, yeah, you can join onto the same table twice. Yes. And you can pull results from both of those joins. Um, yes, because, and you can query the separate joins because each of those joins would have a, an, an on clause, which is, this is, the CUI is calling if, so, you know, you can limit the financial type, for example, um, in our, in our on clause for this contribution join, and then we could do another one that joins onto it, that is limited to a different contribution financial type. Um, again, that's that's something that I'm, is a work in progress in the UI. 
Um, some of the finer stuff about joins I'm still working through, but it's it's looking good and it's shaping up and you know getting uh, getting the kinks worked out. Um, yes, another question was, can I talk about how custom fields are handled? So a custom field that's multi multi value. So regular custom fields are just treated like fields in most of Civi CRM, and this this UI is no exception. So if we wanted to pull in a custom field from, uh, it didn't like that, didn't get any, as any results, a uh, regular custom field. Um, so I think um, like most important issue is a regular old custom field. Um, uh, that didn't work, interesting. They'll fix that. Uh, regular custom fields are, um, are just regular fields. Um, you can you can search on them. So we want to pull in contacts whose most important issue is X, Y, and Z. But with multi-record custom fields, um, oh, I don't have any in this UI, do I? In this, uh, they're actually considered entities. Uh, I haven't created any because this is my little demo setup. But um, but yeah, so you would see your multi-record custom fields in this list. You would see it in this list of joins, and you'd be able to pull in those multi-record custom fields. Again, you'd have to do some grouping and some aggregating because um, the multi-record would return more than one row. Um, you know, it, if you did grouping, you'd also have to do aggregating, I should say that, or you would get more than one row uh, back per contact if they, you would get a row for every you know, record of the multi-value group that they, would, they have. And that's true for all of the um, that's true for all of the joins that are multi-valued. Um, another question was, will advanced search be kept or rewritten for non-admin users? So advanced search isn't going anywhere soon um, because a lot of people use it. It's used for a lot of, um, a lot of Civi CRM is based on advanced search, smart groups, exports, et cetera. Um, but we're hoping that as this new technology that's all Angular based gets up to feature parity with advanced search, we can start to move people off of it. People will start to um, not use it as much because this is better. Uh, we can start to recommend this. You know, that's, this is all down the road a little ways um, and, and start to phase it out. But, um, you know, it's not going anywhere today or this year or next year. Uh, so renaming the columns, uh, not currently supported, um, maybe. Um, it's It would be something that you could do in your export. Um, actually, I don't think export supports renaming columns either. I mean, you can do it once you download the spreadsheet. But um, so, so yeah, saving the results so that a non-admin can see them. Um, well, yes, you can save the results as a smart group and then a non-admin can click on the smart group and, and view the contacts in that group. So that's one way to do it. But in, our, in terms of like creating a report or a dashlet, that's phase two stuff. That's true. The, the smart group contacts will not show the aggregate columns. You're right. The smart group contacts just show the contacts. That's true. Um, so that's why we want to push on phase two for this little fundraising pitch. We're raising money for phase two right now. Um, does the update contact search action have the same update limits as existing search screens? Well, funny you should ask because there's actually two bulk updates here. Um, yeah, and there, I need to disambiguate these two labels. So update multiple contacts is a profile. Well, this is the old school profile screen and it would be something that is familiar I think you 
pick that and continue, and it probably takes you to a different screen. Um, that is that works by profiles. The update multiple records that is in this new UI, which is different because it's API based and therefore it works for any screen. Like this list of actions isn't isn't populated for every single entity in this uh, that we could search for. If we're just searching for something simple like activities, uh, it will only have a few options. But update is one of them that is here for everything because it lets you pull in any record uh, that the API that you have permission to update for any contact you have permission to update and lets you do it just through the API. Can you access the results via an API? Um, well, yes. Um, this is the API. I, I don't know if I made that clear at the beginning, but this, this is running on API 4 and nothing else. There is no, there's no other search engine going on here. So uh, when, you, when you're pulling these, all of these criteria, you are literally just setting API params and hit go and you're hitting you're you're firing the api call and these are the results from the api so yes uh absolutely you can there's an api for these results um in, because these results are coming from the api and that's something in general that i'm very excited about for api v4 is that it can do all of this stuff it supports aggregate functions it supports uh nested uh where clauses and having and um it supports joins uh, in all kinds of different ways um you know it, it supports aggregating grouping uh it's 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 getting really powerful and it needed to be in order to be the search engine um for this screen and it's it's getting better every week as we iterate on this ui uh, add more features to the API so that this can do more. Uh, so there's nothing that this can do that the API can't do. Um, and yes, it wouldn't be that hard to have it um, give you an API, to output an API call that you can make, uh, much like the API Explorer does. Uh, you know, I'm not sure how much you played with the API Explorer, but this is very reminiscent of that. Um, I'll just show you that screen real quick. Um, the API Explorer lets you pick an entity like activity, action like get, and then all of those params that we were just looking at are presented more like API params, but you can do the joins, the where clause, the group by, the having, order by, and then it's going to generate down here the kind of API, the, the code for the API for you to run. So. Um, you could use this screen for that, and that would generate the API code. You can do that right now, um, and you can create your very complicated uh, SQL. And it's, it's also going to show you the SQL in this debug screen. Um, does it support first and last? Let's see. So... Here's all of the functions that it currently supports. Abs, av, absolute value, average, coalesce, concatenate, count, current date, greatest, group concat, is null, least, lower, max, min, null, replace, round, sum, upper. Um, none of those are literally first and last. I can't remember um, what those do exactly, but... Um, it does a lot, and uh, if we need to write a patch, it's pretty simple to just get it to support some more SQL functions. Um, it's just a it's just a few lines to say, you know, I want to also support this, and here's the params that it takes. So yeah, we can do that as well. Um, and that's another thing that I want to pull into the search screen is the ability to um, is the ability to uh, to use more functions. Um, so I just hit the back button and I've got still on this screen all of my search params that I pulled in because it was uh, in the URL bar. Um, so that's pretty cool. And that URL, that what that URL is, 
what that URL bar is storing is API params. So it's not anything special compared to um, compared to what you can just do with the ordinary API. And that's what I like about this architecture is that um, a search is an API call. An API call is a search. Um, they're interchangeable. When you create this smart group, um, it is literally just storing API parameters, nothing else. Um, none of the, I don't know if anybody's looked at the smart group architecture of old, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to store form data or things like that. It's just API param. So I think this is going to be a lot cleaner um, to build upon and build on top of and let people uh, take this and run with it. Um, just adding new cool features to the API will uh, almost automatically add them to the search screen. You'd have to do a little UI work to expose them, but uh, it, it certainly, they're, they're there for the engine. Now, I do know that there's been a lot of questions about theming and dependencies on Bootstrap. Um, so I just want to say that I do want to see that problem solved, and I want to see it solved soon. Um, this, you know, historically, uh, Civi CRM had sort of at, sort of uh, messy theming, and Bootstrap came along and seemed like the wave of the future, but hasn't been fully embraced by everyone and, and hasn't really taken over the UI. And so this screen uses Bootstrap, but not it's not like it um, it's not like it would be a total rewrite to decouple it from Bootstrap. Um, there's really just a few things that are very Bootstrappy that it uses. Um, one of which is these Bootstrap dropdowns. Um, that actually requires some Bootstrap JavaScript to make these go, as far as I know. Um, and another is the Bootstrap pager. Um, that was really nice to have just a drop-in thing for Angular. Other than that, I mean, there's the button styling, but that's not a huge deal. It's really the drop-downs in the pager. Other than that, the we're using I'm I'm using flex boxes to to do the major layout things uh, and field sets. So it's definitely doable to decouple this from Bootstrap. But there's you know if you're interested in theming and you're interested in helping Civi CRM get onto um, or so the the theming roadmap, which has really come up as a discussion topic since we um, since we showed off a, a preview of this screen. Um, you know, come and come and join us. There's a there's a discussion being had right now. Let me paste the link into the chat about um, so there's there's a, a chat being had right now on the user interface and the theming guides and all of that. So if you're interested in helping to push that along, we're going to try and schedule a but, uh, but yeah, that's the new search screen. I'm really excited for people to try it out and play with it. Um, it is a hidden extension currently in core, uh, in, the, in the core alpha if you download that, or you can go to uh, download this extension separately from our from the GitLab page, um, and uh, and try it out in the latest uh, the latest release of Civi CRM. Uh, it'll it'll just look perfect if you are using Shortage. If you're not and you're using some other um, Bootstrap, it will look a little less perfect. And if you um, aren't using Bootstrap at all, it will not work. Unfortunately, um, trying to solve that problem soon, but. Um, so the question was issue filing issues on the search screen. Um, good question. I think for now they could be filed to the search uh, repository. So let's see. Fix that link as well. I'll definitely see that, um, and it's uh, 
it's it still is an extension, um, even though the the code has moved to the core repository on GitHub. But uh, you can still you can still file issues there. Thanks, everybody. Glad to be able to show that off. Uh, glad to be able to uh, have some people trying it out now. Uh, let me know how it goes um, with your with your testing, and uh, let me know you know if you if you run into any little bugs. Like I noticed a couple little glitches when I was doing this presentation, and I can shouldn't take too long to fix those. But uh, if you notice anything else, just let me know. Give me a shout. Give me a patch, even better, and uh, and we'll get little stuff like that taken care of so that people can have a good experience using this. All right. Thanks, all. Thank you.